Hello and welcome to another episode of Philomena.com in conjunction with the U.S. Embassy Monrovia. This time we're going to be talking about the upcoming diversity visa lottery season and I'm joined once again by Vice Consul Osandi Dingba. Thank you so much for being here once again. Thank you for having me. And you're going to give us a lot of information today on a very, very hot topic here in Liberia. Yes. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Can you explain to the viewers exactly what is the Diversity Visa uh, Lottery Program? Okay, so the Diversity Visa Lottery is a program that was implemented to increase immigration from countries that have a low immigration rate to the U.S. Okay, all right. When does this season begin here in Liberia? So it begins today, October 2nd. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it runs for about a month until November 5th. Okay. That's the application process. Okay. Yeah. So a, a question that is on many people's minds here in Liberia, how many applicants are selected on a yearly basis from Liberia? So from Liberia specifically, it varies year to year. There's no set number, but globally, since it's a global program, there's 55,000. So once that runs out, then the visa is... Okay. Over. So it's 55 thousand globally yeah, the and then we get a small portion of it. each country gets a portion of that 55,000 correct okay just want to make sure that's clear yeah. <laughs> now is there a age requirement to um, enroll into this program so there's not an age requirement but you need to be a high school graduate so whatever age that is in Liberia it could be 17 18 ish mm -hmm. um, but the requirement is that you need to have a US high school education or equivalent depending okay. on your job. Okay, all right. Um, another big question that people I'm sure will want to know is what are the costs associated with entering into this program, enrolling? Okay, so it's free. There's no cost with applying for DV. Now, once you win, later on down the line, you will need to pay uh, a fee. And I want to specify, <laughs> if you win the DV, you win an opportunity for an interview. It doesn't mean if you win DV, it doesn't mean you're automatically going. You still, we still need to right. conduct the interview and all this other stuff. So there's there's a, there's steps to the process. You yeah. you win the DV, then you get the chance to apply, but that does not mean that you have the visa. Correct. So there's a whole other process which we're, we're going to get into. Yes, we will. So not every applicant is the same, right? So there's a lot of different scenarios, and I'm sure you've been brought these scenarios over the years. So let's talk about what if there is a person that is applying and they've been caring for a um, child uh, of one of their siblings. Are they able to include that child into their DV entry? Uh, it depends. Really, the answer would be no. Um, you need to list your biological children, okay. stepchildren, or adopted children. Okay. And it's very important for some reason, maybe it's one of the myths about visas, etc. For some reason, people do not list their kids. Okay. Um, so it's very important. There's a lot of people that are qualified to go, but they end up being refused because they didn't list their children. Or somebody told you, hey, if you list your kids, they're going to deny you. That's not true. Even if, yeah, so, but for your question specifically, you're saying, oh, I've been raising somebody since they're right. this age, whatever. If you legally adopted them, yes. But, but it has to be legal. Yes. So it can't just be a, a community thing where the family knows. Which, it has to be yeah. legal. And if it is, which I was touching this again. Um, you have to bring all your documents. So if you did adopt this child, documentation. And then even outside of that, just for the interview itself, bring all your documents. Another thing people get denied for is they won uh, the lottery, they show up, maybe they're missing this document or that document. And eventually that either delays your process mm -hmm. or you could even possibly be refused. So again, to my Liberian people, one thing we need to make sure we're doing is following instructions. I know it's a little bit difficult for us yes. at times, yes. but you are only hurting yourself when you don't uh, go by the instructions and the proper documentation. This can delay or deny your visa application. So make sure you are following the instructions to the T and make sure you have all your documentation in order before you come uh, in order to make the process as smooth as possible. Right? Yes. All right. So another another uh, scenario. What if the applicant um, gets married um, and has a child in between that time where they, uh, they've already uh, applied? Yeah. So they would then add the child 
or at the spouse afterwards um, that is allowed okay. you need to bring say you got married afterwards mm -hmm. all right you guys were living together you never officially got married now you want dv you want to bring your partner with you you guys get married that's fine. In the interview, we'll ask you about it. Bring the documents. They have to be legitimate documents, right. <laughs> which I know sounds obvious, but people. It's not, com you know, you know since it's not so yeah, common so sometimes. <laughs> if you do, you are allowed to You add a child, add a spouse. I just want to emphasize that a lot of people will play single. They are single. They win a DV. Hey, let's get married. Let me add you to the thing. and. <laughs> you will be denied for that reason, but um, yes. So it should be legal. It should be something that's already going to happen, not because you have now applied for this Correct. and you think it will help your chances. It'll hurt it. it severely. It'll hurt it. Okay. So yeah. you understand that. That's another scenario. Um, all right. So say we they've gone through all these things. They've checked all the boxes, right. and now they've gotten um, through the process, but they can't afford the fees for their family right the visa once you go through the application although the application is free right. now you have you've gotten to the point where you need to pay the fees for the visas what if they can't afford to pay for their family at that time can they join them later on down the line uh, yes however the DV season ends at the end of the fiscal year every year which is September 30th so if you have an early interview mm -hmm. um, and you can't afford to bring the rest of your family either your spouse or your children if you do get the funds later on, before September 30th, okay. it's possible for them to follow you, but they won't be able to go on this visa classification uh, with you if it's past September 30th, okay. but you can always file for them later. Okay, so as long as it's before that September 30th date, it's yes. possible. And even if you know ahead of time that you won't be able to afford them, still list them. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, See, there you yeah, go. Just list them. That's See fine. how, because it's a long process. So if yeah. you start now, we have a whole fiscal year, like you said. So if it starts today, yeah. then we have all the way till September 30th, 2025. Is that is that what we're, or 2024, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, the people that are applying today, uh, they won't know. The people that are applying within this next month, they won't know that they've won until about May or June. Okay. So that's when that that was going to be my next question. Okay. When when are they going to get notified? Yeah, May or June of next year is when the people that play will know, and then after that, like the following year, is when they'll get their interview. So people, as of this year, twenty twenty four, found out they won DV probably in May or June. Uh, May or June. Okay. And then they'll get their interviews for DV next year since okay. DV just finished. Okay. So where can uh, our viewers go to get more information about the DV process? So they can go to dvlottery.state.gov and also our website, uh, the U.S. Embassy website, has information on that. All right. Well, Thank you so much for all that wonderful information. It's a lot of information. So I want you to sh share with our viewers um, the main takeaways that they need to make sure they cover so the process is as seamless as possible. Okay, so the main takeaways, I'd say there's three. Uh, one being, uh, make sure you bring all your documentation. Two being, list your family members. And three, the deadline for the application is on November 5th. Okay, okay so before we go, um, recently I saw a story that Liberia is one of the highest in the world for U.S. visa denials. Yeah. Uh, I know there's some there's there's something behind there. So can you right. explain to the audience what actually causes that high rate of visa denials? Yeah. Okay. So for this specific diversity visa lottery, it's different from the statistic of the visitor B1, B2 okay. visa denial. Um, so I'll still answer that. But for DV specifically, mm -hmm. a reason why there's a lot of refusals or why people would just get refused in general is fraudulent documents. Um, the thing I've touched on with not listing your children, okay. you could be very qualified to go. You have kids for whatever reason you didn't put them on. Unfortunately, the rule is you can no longer go. You're not qualified right. for the other classification. The reason is Liberians don't return. It's a visitor visa. I think that's the story I read. It yeah. was the high people don't come back. Yeah, it's that simple. If you say you're going to go for two weeks to visit your cousin, you stay for two months or two years or forever, that affects everybody else in the country. So, right. 
So yeah. it's our own people working yeah. against the rest of the population. So yeah. we really, as Liberians, need to uh, continue to spread this message that you know we are all one, and one person's actions can affect the rest of us. So yeah. I think if, that's something that needs to be shared. If Liberians went and returned, <laughs> the refusal rate would drop drastically. drastically. Wow. Okay. So there you have it, everyone. I know this is a hot topic. People have been asking me about it. So there it is. Tell your people when they go to visit, if they get uh, uh, approval, make sure you come back. All right. And no fraudulent documents, please. Please. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this wonderful information with us. Uh, this is a very important program that many librarians do apply. Um, I'd like to thank the U.S. Embassy Monrovia for engaging in this conversation and look out for more from Philomena.com and the U.S. Embassy Monrovia.